with an intent to change, you're wasting your time in Jesus. You might as well just go ahead and become a sinner. <coughs> I hear you, Lord. Go to 1 Corinthians 11 now. Take me off the page. 1 Corinthians 11. But somebody just said, I ain't got to do that. I felt the Holy Spirit. I ain't got to listen to you. Don't. This is the word. How many of y'all know I come out the Bible? Do word come out of itself or do we come out of the Bible? And if you think I come out of myself, please, let's sit down and talk. I'll have a meeting with you. We can sit down and talk. Like brothers and sisters. If I say something wrong, please bring it to me. Tony does. Ron does. Jeffrey brings it to me. Even this brother here brings it to me. Our sisters bring it to me. <laughs> I don't have a problem. But do you have a problem with this? Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of every woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesizing, having his head covered, dishonors his head. But every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered, dishonors her head. For that is even all one as if she were shaved. For the woman be not covered, let her also be shot. But if it be a shame, thank you. If it be a shame for a woman be shunned or shaven, let it be covered. Verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head. Do I got to do religious with that? Hello. Anybody got a question with me about that? It says right here, for a man indeed ought not to cover his head. That sounds like a hat to me. That sounds like a scarf to me. Hello. Look at that. <laughs> That's maybe me praying and prophesying, brother. But I love that. Thank you. <laughs> but how deep can you go with that? Only people who want to do what they want to do want to find some religious excuse to address it. That ain't what that really means. Well, it's simple English to me. For a man, indeed, ought not to cover his head. For as much as he is the image and glory of who? God. God. But the woman is the glory of who? Man. For the man is not a woman, but the woman of man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power of her own head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. Amen. So every time you keep your head covered, Lord's service, men, you dishonor your head. And want to say you in Christ. Bring me to heaven, Lord. Okay. You can't follow that simple rule. Something's wrong. Now, go run the pass and tell him I said it. Didn't work. His doctrine is wrong. Okay. And I bet you he'll rebuke you too. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's get back on track. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We still talk about false balance. That was for somebody who likes to keep their head covered. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember, I said the false balance would be praying too much, studying too much, and all that? Ecclesiastes 12 and 12. And further, by these, my son, be admonished, the word admonished means be warned, of making many books, there is no end. You run into every kind of book there is. You're at the library, you're down the street, you're picking out philosophy over here, Socrates over there, Confucius over here. Making many books, what does it say? Is that there's no end. And much study is a what? Weariness of the flesh. Because you're never going to get an answer. You're going to this book, then that book. You're going to this book, then that book, then this book, then that book. And when you got the total answer in one book. And that's in Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. Keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. There it is. For God shall bring every work in the judgment. Every work in the judgment. With every 
every secret thing. So you can think you're doing things secretly. Then they say every secret thing. Come to He sees you everywhere. He's, the, he's at every table when it's dinner time. He's the silent listener to every conversation. I say it all the time. Whether it, what? Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. But what's the conclusion? What do you say the conclusion of the whole matter is? It's to what? Keep his commandments. It's the whole duty of man. Amen. Keep his commandments. Philippians chapter 1. Now let's get into some bones. You ready to really be bold? Amen. I love it when y'all are here. Because it's like y'all are real. I love this scene. Because they're telling me y'all listening. Or ignoring. <laughs> I'd rather have you ignore. I don't mind. <laughs> That, that means you're not disrupting those who really want <laughs> But go ahead and take your notes. I love to watch people take notes. I love to watch people highlight and write down. You know, brother came up to me today and let me know he did a research on the things I was talking about last week and saw blah, 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 blah. He said, man, you was right. I said, no, you was right because you followed me high. Don't take me, I'm just a vessel. <laughs> Amen. But how are you going to remember what I preach if you don't write it down? They don't need to open your mouth and you ain't got no proof. Believe me, I'm going to bring proof. Philippians 1. Looking at verses 14 to 21. Philippians 1 started verse 14 to 21. And many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident. I love that word confident. Confident is another word for hope. In the Greek, the word hope means confident expectation. So every time you see the word hope in the Bible, it's saying confident expectation. So when you see the word confident, you're saying hope. How many of you need hope? How many of you that Jesus gives you hope? And when you talk about Jesus boldly, hope comes in. But the people will see, boy, you is awesome. Even if you just say, I don't care, Jesus is God. That's bold. Especially when you're talking to false religion. I might not read my Bible every day and don't know from cover to cover, but you know what I do know? He's God. Amen. Be bold. Come on now. Wax and confident by my bonds, in other words, he was in jail, are much more bold what? to speak the word without what? Fear. Without fear. Because your fear should be toward God, not toward any man. Amen. Verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, always got an argument, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bond. See, they were even talking about him while he was in jail. Man, when he preached, he locked up, they still said his theology is wrong. Paul was full of crap. But we'll get God right in his letter. Yeah, it ain't in the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Verse 17. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding, every way, whether it in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. He said, I don't care whether you're pretending or whether you're telling the truth, Christ will be preached. I love Paul. And I therein do rejoice, yes, and will rejoice. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the, and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus. According to my earnest expectation and my hope and my confident expectation that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all what? Boldness. Y'all hear me, boy. Somebody get it. As always, and so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by light or by death. For to me to live in Christ and to die is what? Amen. Amen. That's a powerful word, dude. Go to Acts 14. Acts 4. Acts 4. How many of you here have a problem reading? Don't, let, don't be ashamed. I struggled with it for years. How many of you ever been in college in here? How many of you ever been to high school? How many of you got your, just got a GED? Come on. You might even just got it in jail. But guess what Christ says about you? Marvelous. <laughs> guess what people, when you stand up and be bold for Christ, are going to say about you? Boy, 
who they did with. Well, that's what I tell you. Well, that's true. Go to, go to uh, Acts 4. Acts 4. Acts 4. And let's look at starting at verse... Uh, let's start at verse... All right, Lord, I hear you. Start at verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be what? Saved. Now, watch this. Stop right there before I go to 13. You've got to understand something. These brothers, these apostles, did not read or write. They knew their job as fishermen, carpenter, whatever they did. They couldn't read or write. But Jesus didn't pick out the most intelligent. So they're standing in front of the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes who've been to school. Yes. They know the Bible. They study the law all their lives. They have they enough money to sit them to school. Yeah. But who's standing there? Peter and John. Amen. Now look, look at this. They can't read or write. But they're speaking the word so powerful in front of these folk that watch what happened. Verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned, never been to school, unlearned and with us ignorant men. They marveled. Woo, dog, now hear me. They marveled. You know why? Because they were speaking stuff that only people went to school knew. See, this ought to tell you, you don't have to go to Bible college to work for the Lord. and that degree, I got a degree, it's called Bible. Amen. I'm a certified Bible reader. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's right. I'm anointed. He tells me what to say. The Holy Ghost teaches me all things. I don't need your school. So when you do talk about it, you'll get a 
fight. <laughs> but no one fights to walk in and no one fights to battle. <laughs> I don't battle better with my competitors and debating people because they're stupid to me. Why do you remind me when I first got born? I didn't want to do nothing. I used to say, it's just a waste of my life. <laughs> but for us religions, walk away from it. But before you walk away, you still got to say, Jesus is God. Amen. Walk more back to him.
Do we read that already? No. Acts 9, verse 26. I'm on a mission now. I'm tired of lazy folks. 26 to 29. Acts 9, verse 26 to 29. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but there were, but they were afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. See, this is after he was killing Christians. So, you know, I don't blame those Christians. Though. I've been a little leery too. Hey, dude, you've been catching Christians, killing them, you know, burning, stoning them alive. And now you're talking about you born to get hold up. <laughs> no, I ain't going to hold up, son. You ain't coming here. But watch this. He had a witness for him. Who's witnessing for you? Why? So Barnabas, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. That's where I'm going to go 29. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Christians but they went about to what? Kill. Now, Paul will switch. That ain't going to kill him. But what I want you to see there, Barnum spoke up for him. <coughs> I tell you right now, I see y'all walking down the street and somebody talking, I'm going to speak up for you. People even after the job, he asked me, how come you go down that fresh? And I looked at him and said, I, I was homeless. I said, my friend, do you stay down there? Yeah. I stay down there. And I still go down there. What's wrong with you? You need to come down there. Exactly. Matter of fact, why don't you send your children down there so they get an idea that if they keep acting the way they act, they may wind up down here. <laughs> At least the people down here ain't ashamed of fear no more because they know this is a stepping stone to get out. I hope so. Signs and wonders. Sign in the Hebrew means send a signal. 